Um, the last time we moved on from getting the main case prepared with the counter shaft or the cluster um, and the uh, fifth reverse lever. So now uh, we're gonna move on to the main shaft. So this is the part of the transmission that takes all the power transmission from the motor and transfer it to the rear wheel. So on this cluster here, you're gonna see the third gear, which is here, smallest one, second gear and first gear, okay? And the fifth gear down here, all right? And when this shaft is attached in the transmission, that's the fourth gear on top, all right? So this actually sits sideways in the main case. What you wanna do with this is you're gonna replace the synchros and you're gonna replace the bearings. Synchros are the part of the main shaft that slow the, sync or slow the gear down enough so that you can actually engage the gear. Okay, that's what the point of a synchro is. So when your synchro goes bad, and it doesn't slow the gear down enough, you're gonna get grinding, okay? And that's when you hear kind of grinding, it's because your synchros have gone bad. Let's get started here. You have guys seen me do the disassembly of this in another video. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, break it all the way down and I'll show you guys the build back up, all right? All right, so now we have a, uh, this is the bare main shaft. And uh, you wanna inspect this before you start putting it back together. Um, first things first, you wanna make sure that this tip here has no burrs, no marks, uh, no anything. A lot of times in a high mileage T5, this tip will be destroyed. Um, the second thing you wanna make sure that these two surfaces here and uh, this surface here is very smooth. Um, there's a bearing that rides, a, a needle bearing that rides on this surface and rides on this surface. So if there's any burrs or even just a little nick in it, um, it will cause a huge problem down the road and uh, your gear will eventually lock up and seize. So now that we've got the uh, main shaft disassembled, you wanna assemble it from the back end, which is down here first, and then come up towards the front. So we're gonna put a rag over the top here to protect these surfaces as we put it in the vise. I have a special vise here that has um, a little holder for uh, round objects. Uh, do not put it in a vise like this if you can avoid it, okay? If you can't, uh, load up on the rags, all right? Maybe put some brass, uh, pieces of brass in there or something to protect the surface. You just kinda wanna in there best you can. Doesn't have to be perfectly up and down straight, just enough to where you can get them on there, okay? So on this particular shaft, you're gonna see a check ball right here. And this is to stop this uh, bearing race here, which you also have to make sure is very smooth and uh, make sure that it's clean. You just wanna clean it off here. But uh, you wanna make sure that this area is smooth and that that check ball is in that hole. Now, some of the shafts, um, depending on what T5 you have, will not have a check ball, they'll have a little rod that looks like this. And that rod will go into a deeper version of this hole and the race that will uh, be going over that has a deeper groove, okay? I usually like to use uh, the one with the rod for higher performance motors. But this is going to be a stock build, so uh, we're not going with that shaft. Okay. okay. So, before you put this race on, you're gonna run uh, a spring. Now, in the T5, you have two uh, springs. You wanna make sure that these uh, C-springs are not damaged on the edges. You wanna make sure it's smooth. And if they're damaged, replace them. They do have kits that allow that. Now, you're gonna pick one of these grooves here. You're gonna see three grooves on the, on the uh, shaft where they're open. And you're gonna take the tip with the little it kind of checks off a little bit right there. And you're gonna put in that groove going clockwise, okay? So you're gonna take it, stick it in just like that. Now we'll move on to these uh, new synchros. So for the, uh, these two synchros here are for the three, four. They're just a one piece. And the synchros for uh, one, two are three pieces, okay? The three pieces that come with the inner cup, the synchro itself, and then the outer synchro. Okay, so with these three pieces, the part that wears down is the inner piece, okay? This is a new style synchro. They changed the way the fibers are. This is a lot more durable uh, than the original design, which looks like this, okay? The reason why they changed it is because this one tends to burn down and really slick over, over the years, so they changed it to this style. So, the worst thing you can do when building a T5 is to put these synchros in dry, okay? You wanna soak them in transmission fluid for at least a couple minutes, 
so that uh, they get um, soft a little bit so that it's not dry when you first start the motor up. Okay, so you're gonna take uh, some clean transmission fluid, which I have here on hand. You just drop them in there. These ones have uh, fab synchro fabric on the inside, so you drop those in too. Right, switch it around a little bit. And wait 15 minutes and then come yank them out and then we'll start putting it together. We've let it sit for a few minutes now and uh, it's ready to be assembled. So this is the first synchro for the first gear. So we're gonna take this outer part of the synchro here. Uh, just make sure there's no dirt on the inside. Uh, anything that kind of mess up the, uh, the fiber part of the synchro. It's all smooth in there. And then you're gonna install it on the shaft. So there's three grooves on the outer part of the synchro that uh, you wanna line up with the grooves here in the shaft, okay? So let's get that down there. Boom. Now if it moves a little bit, don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. Now we're gonna grab the uh, synchro that we soaked in fluid here. Boom. There it is. Because you don't want to put them in dry. And then drop this down in the middle. This doesn't have any specific orientation. Then you're gonna take the inner part of the synchro here and slide it down and let it fall right into those grooves. Now there's teeth down in here and then it'll just fall right on in. Then you're gonna take the uh, bearing race here and like I said before, make sure it's clean and it has no burrs or any gashes or anything like that, just in case you had some metal flying around in the trans. You're gonna slide this down. Now this has just a bit of an interference fit um, it's not super loose, but if you just make sure it goes on perfectly straight and work it side to side, it'll go on just fine. You just rotate it until it drops. Today, there. Okay? Now we've done that, your number one synchro is in. Okay? So, like I said, make sure that groove stays right there. Now you're going to take your uh, bearing. Now, some of the older T5s, the 87 and the 93, will have a plastic bearing under the first gear. Um, Tremit got smart, realized that it was a really bad idea and it caused a lot of wear issues. So they put a metal cage be uh, needle bearing because first gear is the most used gear. Uh, every time you, you know, you're in traffic or you're coming off of the line or whatever. So there you go, you slide it on just like that. And then you take your first gear, which is the biggest gear of them all. And with these parts here facing downwards, you're gonna engage uh, over this bearing and then line up these little tabs on the synchro with these cutouts here on the gear. So basically when it goes over it's going to look like this. Okay? It's going to go on those grooves. Just go ahead and slide it down. Uh, just be careful. You don't want to crush the, uh, the needle bearing. You don't want to make it lose any bearings while you're doing this. Okay? So, boom. Alright? There. So now it's on there. So now that you have the first gear on, now you're gonna put on the, the, uh, the rear main bearing, okay? Very simple, it just slides right on. Um, and like I said, don't force it. Um, it's a, just a very simple process, it just slides right on. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, install the bearing. So it's very simple. It's a brand new bearing. Uh, you just go ahead and down there, it's either Timken or Koyo. And you just go ahead and slide it on down. So sometimes it'll give you a little trouble, but just go at it until, and there it is. Very simple, slides right on. All right, so now that we've installed the bearing, uh, now we have to install the fifth gear and then the speedometer gear. So this is the fifth gear. Um, we uh, are going to uh, install it. Sometimes it has an interference fit, meaning that you had to slide over that part, but it'll get down here and it gets a little funky, all right? Now, you have an option, you can press it on, um, if it slides on and you're lucky, it'll slide right on. Most of the time, for me, it doesn't slide right on. So what I'll do is I'll take a wrench like this and I'll heat it up on the inside. Try not to heat up the teeth on the outside because they'll turn blue, they'll change color and make the gear really weak. Okay, so, so you're gonna just go on the inside here and heat it for one minute. Especially the bottom area here. Keep the flame moving because I'm telling you, if you sit in one spot, it's gonna get a hot spot and it'll weaken the gear. 
all right? Propane doesn't get hot enough to really do any real damage, but you still don't want to make hot spots. Okay, so we've heated it for a minute. You'll know it's really hot once you see smoke coming off it. And sometimes when you drop it, it'll slide right on. And in this case, it's not. Okay, so then we use a pipe as a uh, slide hammer. You'll hear it, it'll make a different noise. All right, there it is. So there's a groove on the shaft. You have to make sure that the fifth gear is under that groove because the snap ring goes there and holds it in place, okay? So in the kit, we have a brand new snap ring in the rebuild kit, so that's what we're gonna use to hold this down. Then we're gonna move on to putting on the speedometer. All right, so for this part, you wanna make sure you have your safety glasses on. In the kit, there's gonna have two snap rings. You're gonna have a thick one, you're gonna have a thin one. So the thin snap ring goes on the, this part right here. So you're gonna make sure that you have the snap ring facing in the right direction. And meaning that uh, it's the, the area that you can grab, you want it to face upward so you can take it off again if you have to. All right, and you make sure you have your safety glasses on and you slide it on down until it snaps into place. And there it is. And you can tell it snapped in place because it'll be smooth, okay? That's the first gear, everything's in there, it's not gonna move, it's, it's in there, okay? Next thing you wanna do is install the Speedo gear. So you're gonna see a hole right here, okay? Now, some T5s come smooth because there'll be electronic Speedo, which means that the Speedo gear will be down here. This one is a mechanical Speedo, so you have a hole. But if, if you have one with electronic Speedo, you can still use it, but you would use like a, uh, um, a cutoff wheel or something and, and cut a groove there. So you can use this clip right here, install this clip into that groove. And in this case, we have a hole, so we can install that hole. Press it down so that it's flat against the shaft, and then take the speedo gear. This is a 7.2 speedo gear from 87 to 93. There's also speedo gears. This is an 8.2 speedo gear. This comes from 94, 95. And then there's a black speedo gear that comes in the uh, four cylinder T5s, which is a 6.2. Uh, 6 tooth is pretty desirable because it has a lot of different options as far as, uh, because the four cylinders in the turbo coupes came with, uh, 373 gears factory, if you have a 6 tooth, you can easily find the proper um, coinciding uh, speedo gear to match it, you know, to get the proper reading on your speedo. So anyway, um, 7, seven uh, tooth right here, it's a stock for a T5, oh, there it is. So this is the rear half of the shaft has been assembled, and we're ready to turn it over and start building up the front part of the shaft. Uh, this part for the rebuild is a little tricky, but uh, with practice you'll get it. Um, if you don't get it the first time, don't force it because you'll break the uh, the keys or the shift or tabs or, or the, sh the synchro tabs, I should call them. So these are synchro tabs or synchro keys. Um, you can upgrade your T5 by getting um, solid ones. Uh, they're a lot better. They shift smooth for a lot longer of a time, especially under harsh conditions. We're gonna use the stamp ones because like I said, this is a stock rebuild um, for a buddy. So hey, let's go for it. Okay, cool. Okay. So first thing you're gonna do, make sure you got safety goggles on. Now on the bottom, how you took this tip here, the little tip, and uh, put it in this groove. Uh, we wanna do that again, clockwise, opposite to the one on the bottom. So you're gonna... Remember how uh, we did the clockwise a direction which is this way on the C spring on the bottom we're going to do the same thing with the C spring on the top but you want to have both of them where the beginning of the spring starts in the same slot right here now you want to make sure that the synchro is uh, the, the gap on the synchro is facing this area right here we talked about earlier it's facing this slot now here's the tricky part you want to get these to sit in there in a way where they don't fall. You gotta hold these in there while you're putting on the outer part of the synchro, main, the main synchro hub. It can prove to be challenging, okay? 
So I'm gonna use an extra special tool for this. A rubber band. Anyway, <laughs> rubber bands are like one of the most quirkiest, useful tools ever. So stick a rubber band on the outside of the synchro just like this, on the synchro hub like that. And you stick these tabs in the groove, okay? Boom. Now they're all being held in place. Now, this is the outer part of the hub. The gear part of the hub faces downwards towards the first gear. This is the part where the fork engages and brings it from first, first to second gear, back and forth. Okay, so that's how this works. Inside of the hub, you're gonna see these grooves, these cutouts. The rest of these teeth are smooth, but then you're gonna see right here, there's a little cutout. That's where those tabs and this groove go. You have to make sure they line up. That's the only way you're gonna get it to stay in there. Otherwise than that, it's not gonna work right. So you gotta make sure you line up those grooves with the tabs. Now, even with the rubber band, you still gotta kinda put your finger on the bottom of these to make sure they don't kick out at the bottom because that's what they wanna do. You get it kinda started and then just slowly kinda, I'm gonna watch your fingers here because I've destroyed my fingers many a times doing this. And boom, there it is, okay? Now you guys are wondering, oh my God, we're gonna do the rubber band still stuck in there. Go to Harbor Freight, get you a pick. Just bring it up just slightly, reach under there, and pull our special tool out. Problem solved. So now we have our hub assembly installed. So now we're gonna move on to putting in the uh, second gear synchro. So once again, you take the outside, make sure that it's clean, install it. Like that, I'm gonna take this one, the inner part with the fluid all over it, I'm gonna pop it down in there. Then we take the inner part and make sure it's clean, and then you're gonna install this just like that, it sits in the teeth like that, okay? Now, Next, you're gonna take, there's a, a uh, in the kit, in the rebuild kit, there's two washers. There's a large one, and then there's a smaller one. Now, uh, sometimes these fit perfectly, and sometimes they don't. If they don't fit exactly right, it's okay to use the old one, okay? As long as there's no burrs, or if it's not ate up by uh, any metal shaves or anything, it's okay to use the old one. So for the second gear, you're gonna use the big washer of the two, okay? Let's slide that over. It's a very tight fit. Boom, there it is. And after that, you get what they call a uh, spiral spring. Uh, these things are really finicky. Uh, here's a spiral spring, you see? It's a little spiral. Just be careful when you're putting this on. Let's go ahead and slide this on. So you just kind of stretch the spring just a little bit. And then you start with one area and then just kind of walk it all the way around. Now, um, I've been doing this for a few years with a pick. You can also use a screwdriver, but you have to be pretty gentle. Um, yeah, so let's go knock that out real quick. And just while you're you know, pushing down, you're just walking it down as you're pushing down on it so that it'll Make sure that it gets into place. So next thing you're gonna add to the uh, cluster, the main cluster build up here is the uh, second gear. So what I like to do is I like to go over to my deburr wheel and deburr the uh, dog teeth here um, on the gear. This is a huge, huge issue um, with shifting. If you do not do that, um, it will be difficult to shift and it will not get any better um, with time. So uh, as long as these are you know, uh, pointed on the top like a little house, uh, they're okay uh, as long as they're not all the face of it is not all ground off and that uh, any little burrs have been removed This is a huge huge issue. So what you're gonna do is see this groove right here is gonna go over these tabs Okay, so it's going ahead and slide that right on down Boom. See how it's all jiggling around Okay Now there is a needle bearing that goes inside here, but before you put that in there there is also a uh, washer 
that goes in there. All right, so now that we've got the second gear on and we have that groove right there where the, uh, the synchro, right there, just like that. See, it's jiggling around, it's not supposed to be like that. So uh, there is a needle bearing that goes inside there. But uh, because of that spring that's on the bottom, um, because the springs are flat, we have this washer in here to uh, protect the base of this, uh, of this needle bearing, just like that, okay? So uh, I always like to put it in after because if you try to put this on first and then the second gear, sometimes it hangs up and it doesn't sit down right. And then you go to shim the trans and you think everything's okay and it's not, and then I end up burning it. So stick it in there, just like that. And you take this uh, needle bearing, let's get a little bit of trans fluid on there. Run the rubber so it don't dry. And slide it right down in there. Boom. Okay? No more jiggly jiggly. Alright? There. Uh, next thing after that, you're going to install another spacer and uh, a spacer washer, I guess you'd call it. So you slide that over here, just like that. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and put the or add the thick uh, snap ring. All right. There was a thin one on the back. I showed you guys earlier. This is the thick one that comes in the kits. All right. So let's get our snap ring shots up here. Be careful with this. You don't want to scratch the surface. There. There it is. Boom. So you got the snap ring in. Okay. Same thing with the third gear. You want to check it. Obviously, make sure there's no broken teeth. Deburr the dog teeth here. Make sure that this area is smooth. Make sure that the inside here area is smooth and no burrs or anything. Okay. Um, so yeah, put it on. It faces upwards. And this also has a little washer that goes in there and then a needle bearing. All right, so now that we get the third gear on there, I'm gonna go ahead and add this washer to protect the base of the needle bearing. Now we got a needle bearing here. You're gonna inspect these and make sure that uh, none of the needles are missing and that they're not damaged. Oh, okay, there it is. All right, it's in there pretty good. Now at this point, now you can kind of do like a small little check on your synchros. So if you just press up on this just a little bit, you should feel resistance on this, okay? Shouldn't be easy to, to shift because these synchros act like brakes uh, to slow the gear down. There you go. Okay, so that's how you're going to know off top. All right, all right, is it going to is it going to do what I want it to do when I when I'm going down the road, boom 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 boom. And then it slows it down and you get to change the gear. All right. So that's just another quick little indicator I use. Uh, that's just one of those personal things that I've been doing for years uh, to tell whether or not it's going to do what you want it to do as it's going down the road. All right. So uh, let's move on to the uh, number three synchro and the uh, three, four synchro hub. Now, once you get to this stage, um, you want to take the three, four, one of the one piece synchros and it rides on this smooth surface right here. So let's go back into this jar here and go fishing. All right, so this is the one with the fiber on the inside. All right, so the next stage here, um, after you put on the third gear, is to assemble the 3-4 synchro hub. All right, so this is how I like to do it. It makes it a lot easier than trying to play with the rubber band on this one, it's a little different, okay? So, here's the uh, inner part of the synchro hub, and you want this part facing upwards, okay? So you just place it on the table, just like that. Now, this is the inner part of the synchro hub. Once again, it has uh, grooves like the, the one, two. It has grooves in there, as you can see, for the uh, synchro keys or synchro tabs, okay? Now there's a specific orientation for this too, whereas this chamfered edge here on the uh, on the uh, uh, synchro hub faces upwards as well. So it faces the same direction as this inner part as well, okay? So you're gonna line up these grooves here with these cutouts or these little grooves in the, uh, in the 
outer hub. So you just gonna line them up. So it sits like that. Next, you're gonna take your tabs or your keys. Now, this is also a great place to get an upgrade um, if you have a higher powered transmission to upgrade these tabs to solid billet pieces. They take more of a beating, okay? You're just gonna slide them down in there. And the way they face is these little wings here face the inside of the hub. Now that you've done that, you're gonna take the C-springs, you choose a groove. Now these go into the back of the, uh, the, the key. There's a little area in the back of the key where you can just kind of stick it in there and run it clockwise until it snaps into place. Now carefully turn it over and in that same groove, take the C-spring and place it in there again and run it all the way around. So there, that's your 3-4 uh, synchro uh, hub assembly it is put together. The trick is, once again, putting this together, is this uh, synchro's got cutouts in it. You know, you see the little grooves right here that cut out. And you want these tabs to match those grooves. Sometimes it's, this area can have an interference fit. It can be really hard to get on. Sometimes it's really easy. If it's hard, I'll usually put a socket on there and just hammer it down. If it's easy, you could just be able to press it down. Okay. Do not use heat. I repeat, do not use heat. If you use heat, the uh, C springs get damaged, and they get damaged really easy because they're made of a very brittle and uh, stretchy kind of steel. It's not normal. Okay. Looks like we're gonna get lucky here. I've been able to push it down to at least where the synchro connects. I think with just a little bit of hammering, we'll be able to get it down. Just take a nice big socket. Just give it a couple of taps. Here, make a dead sound. Okay. At the top of this, you're gonna see the splines pop out just a little bit. That's what you want. Okay? So boom, the third gear is in there, second gear is in there, and first gear is in there. Okay. Now, um, one more thing that I like to mention is you're gonna put this flat washer here, okay? This flat washer is designed to give uh, the flat needle bearing a place to ride, which is this flat needle bearing, okay? So I like to use this little dabs of grease. You can use transmission assembly lube, um, you, you know, just lots of options. You can use Vaseline, it doesn't really matter. You're not gonna gob this stuff on just enough. It's almost like a glue, like that, and you kinda, glue it in place and the same thing for this gear here or I mean for this uh, flat needle bearing you're just gonna kind of pull on pull on pull on and then you just do the same thing place that on there just like glue and there it is and you'll see why we do that because once we're installing it into the main case um, they'll tend to want to fall off and that's not what you want. You want them to stay in place until you're ready to install the input shaft. So there you have it. That is the uh, main shaft buildup. So now we're going to go ahead and install the main shaft into the main case.